Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool with Swellwatch on SurfingMagazine.com. Being winter solstice, I figured it was about time for another update on what's happening with our weather, surf, and El Nino La Nina. Wanted to show you what's going on in the short term, so we're going to take a look at the models and see why we've got a series of storms headed our way, and why even though we might be in a La Nina right now, one, it's not all that strong, what it means going forward for the future for not just the short term weather, not just the short term surf, but also what could be trending over the next few months. So I want to give you a full breakdown on everything from right now to the next few months into the future with what we're seeing on the trends and what's happening on the models and the long-range predictions. Let's take a look at what's happening right now. So starting off, taking a look, this is a great model from FN Mach, and this shows the relative vorticity. It's really just, think of it right now, it's this blue area, that's high pressure, red, that's a low pressure. Down here we can see Southern California, here's Northern California, and we can see that we've had that blocking high pressure that I keep talking about on my reports on uh, forecasts.surfingmagazine.com on Swellwatch, and that's really been affecting our surf because it's been taking a lot of these storms far to the north, but let's take a look at what's happening right here in the short term. So if we take a look today, we can see that there's this cutoff low down here. Why is it cut off? This is the jet stream up here and it's pinched off from it. And if we take a look at then what that's doing, it's moving north. So we got this tropical rain that's moving in today. A little bit strange for the uh, the first day of winter. You really wouldn't expect it, especially in a La Nina season. And you wouldn't think that something could be spawned off the tropics and have fuel for it. But sure enough, rain is coming through the area. So if we look at the models forward in time, we can see after that moves, a little bit of low pressure moves down from the north. But then there's bigger stuff that starts heading our way. You can see that even though there's blocking high pressure here when we go out to the Friday time frame, there's still a lot of low pressure moving down and the reason being is that the high pressure hasn't extended as far and so the eastern leg of this blocking high is moving down. This is also what's known as an omega block pattern. This makes kind of an omega uh, pattern. If you look at the, uh, the Greek symbol omega, this kind of overlays. But anyway, it's very typical where you have a low pressure on either side of that high. So that next low that comes down, you can see where that would be coming down right about over top of a large area of California, and this is Christmas Eve. So looking at a lot of rain in that area, I'm gonna to get to that in just a second, but that's kind of the trend that's happening right now and why we've been seeing that block high affecting us for surf, but we're still getting quite a few storms heading in our way. In fact, we can see here one moving out even farther on the long range that would be hitting us then sometime next week. And then of course blocking high pressure, this is what we'd more typically see. So we'll get to that in just a second. Let's take a look at what's been happening so far today. So we can see this is very typical of a tropical storm. If we take a look at this Doppler radar picture that was from this morning, taking a look at that animation, here you can see Southern California, this is Los Angeles, Catalina Channel Islands, and some precipitation was moving through the area, kind of spotty. You can see it's coming in from the south, and it's not really all that strong. One of the reasons being, when we take a look at the satellite picture of this and what's been going on, here's that cutoff low that's down in this area, and it's swirling counterclockwise. And you can see it's, it looks mild. Now, how can we tell that it looks mild? Let me show you a very a typical winter storm, and this is the one up here that would be headed our way for Christmas Eve. So you can see there's a lot more moisture that's coming with that one that got spawned when it came out of the Western Pacific, typical of what you're seeing in this weather front from another storm that would be headed our way and the low would be behind it. But what really gives it away is when you look here at this low and you see all those scattered little dots and those little clouds up there, without getting too technical, those I just tend to call the nasties, that means there's a lot of strong wind behind that, there's a lot of dynamics at play where this is kind of a meandering storm here. And yeah, it's drawing up, you can see the tropical moisture that's been drawing up and wicking into uh, Baja and of course then we've got some of it that's been going into California as well. So that's the difference between what we're seeing now in this cutoff low and the other storms that will be headed our way. So when we take a look at what this means for the winds, this is an interesting thing in that whereas we look today, winds are fairly mild here in Southern California and these wind barbs show the direction of the wind. In this case you can see there's very strong winds going into uh, the Gulf, Alaska and Vancouver area. As we move those models forward in time and we see that low start to exit the area, Keep your eye on that next storm approaching from here. That's the one for Christmas Eve. And now you can see that gets really close to the coast and there's a lot of wind that would be blowing from that. So after that passes, then we'd see that, oh, hey, maybe there's a Santa Ana. And sure enough, we see those winds start to turn offshore. And why? Let's go back here and look at the uh, relative vorticity. Take a look at those highs and lows. As that one moves through on Christmas Eve, boom, there's Christmas Day, a little break in the action. Here comes the next one. And after it passes to the east, you can see what happens here. This guy here, that low, 
he's turning counterclockwise. This high here, he's rotating clockwise. And the most important thing is that there's a strong difference in pressure between this high and this low that causes a pressure gradient and that causes then those winds that we're seeing that would kick up as we get into that offshore flow early next week. Now, interestingly enough, we could have then a strong Santa Ana, as you can see, Tuesday uh, into Wednesday the 28th. So gotta see how that actually plays out. But that's how things are looking in the short term. And we can take a look at the models Let's start looking at the precip models. Taking a look at today, this is a 24 hour accumulation. You can see that tropical moisture being pulled up. There's the low. Let's move these models forward in time. Here comes the one, Christmas Eve, boom, lots of rain headed into California. This has been really consistent on the models lately too. Here's the next one that would be moving in. It looks like probably Monday would start getting uh, some rain in Southern California from this next storm. It'd be a quick mover. And then it's a little bit iffy after that, what actually would happen. So, and now we get just into the end of dreamland here on 360 hours out but showing that we might get something around the sixth and it's just too early to call when you're getting that far out on the models so definitely some precip headed our way but we've got that unique pattern that's been causing this so even though we have blocking high pressure in the northern pacific the leg of the jet stream happens to be to the west of the west coast which allows those storms then to dive south so la nina does typically mean drier weather for southern california but when you see this type of a pattern that means wetter uh, conditions for california and of course less in the way of surf Speaking of surf, let's take a look at what's going on right now and what we can expect over the next couple weeks. You can get more detailed information, of course, at my uh, forecasts at uh, forecasts.surfingmagazine.com. But let's move those forward in time and we can see what happens when that wind swell starts approaching our region right here. This is from the Christmas Eve storm. So looking at a lot of wind swell coming in from this, because we're going to have tight gradients, not just from the offshore that'll uh, be uh, following this, but also as that comes down, be stirring up a lot of wind swell along the way. You can see another storm starting to come here. And you can see that it's it's not actually going to get completely battered. It's not going to go completely into the Gulf because the blocking high pressure isn't all that strong. So there's still the chance for storms to, they're going to ride at high latitudes, but still have the chance for some of these storms to not get completely battered and send some stuff our way. Taking a look at the jet stream, which is then the telltale sign of what's actually going on, we can take a look here from the North Pole looking down. This is uh, Baja, the United States. This is Siberia uh, over in this region, Kamchatka Peninsula. And what we've got here is a great low pressure trough. That's what this is over here. It's dipping far enough south so that storms can be spawned out of the Western Pacific. We really need that to continue, and it is really uninterrupted. You can see some strong storms here forming off Kamchatka. And uh, as we move the models forward in time, a lot of strength in that jet stream with these storms forming. But you can see this is where our uh, blocking high pressure comes in and how it affects the jet stream. So uh, taking a closer look then at where we are in the northeastern Pacific, we can see the same thing. Jet stream looks nice, boom, blocking high pressure comes up, puts a little kink in the works, but then another strong storm can come down. This is what guides most of the storms. Unlike the tropical one coming in today that's from a cutoff low, most storms follow these jet streams. And of course, that's where um, also our swells come from. So gonna still be affected by that, but for how long are we going to be affected by these undulations of pushing storms to the north? Well, let's take a look at what's happening with El Nino and La Nina. And this is what's going to tell us then kind of what to expect over the coming months. So this is what happened. You can see when we were at the peak of our El Nino uh, earlier in the year quickly dropped off. And this below this line, it is the colder temperature anomalies, but really La Nina is when we really get down for a long period, usually below negative 0.5. I think nowadays uh, NOAA is gauging at negative one, but either case doesn't really matter. It's we're at a very weak El Nino. If that we're more in a neutral state, remember it's not just El Nino. It's not just La Nina. There's about 50 shades of gray, or should I say 255? So it doesn't sound so pornographic, but in any case, there's a lot of gradients in between that. So we're taking a look at basically a neutral state and the projection on most of the models show that we'll probably go into a more of a neutral state as we go into next year. That means that we can expect then kind of a normal season with the jet stream at undulating somewhat, but still at decent enough levels to bring storms and of course swells and rain our way to California. So what we might consider a normal year, something we haven't seen for a long time. And what does that actually mean, normal year? 
this, uh, these are the sea surface temperature anomalies right now, and you can see it does look like La Nina. Oh yes, we've got some cold water across the equatorial Pacific. And if you remember last year, this was in red because that was a lot warmer, that was in El Nino, and we had some blob, but look up here, blob's basically gone. That uh, Northeast Pacific warm anomaly uh, is basically dissipated. So we've got cold water returning to the Gulf, although it is colder than normal. But when we take a look at, yeah, this is La Nina. Let me really show you La Nina. That's La Nina. Now this is back at the same time during this year in about the middle of uh, December in 2010. That's when we had actually a moderate uh, La Nina and that's what it looks like. So very, a lot of cold water when we're in La Nina. So when people say we're in La Nina, yeah, we are, but it really is more neutral than anything because it doesn't look anything like that. So when we're taking a look at a condition like this that looks actually more ENSO neutral, it looks like we could be in then for what would be considered a normal standard winter for Southern California and of course the West Coast in total. So that's how it's looking right now. Definitely got some wet weather headed to Southern California. We could really use it. Definitely need the drought relief. Not a lot of good news for surf on the short range because we do have not just some fouled up conditions coming our way from these storms, but also a lot of wind swell as well. We do have some ground swell headed our way, and you can check more detail on that at my forecasts at forecasts.surfingmagazine.com. But there's also some great news as we get into the rest of winter. This is just the beginning of winter. Our rainy season doesn't kick in until January, February. And that's also when the biggest swells hit. Doesn't matter if it's an El Nino, doesn't matter if it's a La Nino or an ENSO, ENSO neutral season, we get, tend to get the biggest uh, swells, the biggest storms coming out of the Northern Pacific in and around the January and February time frame. So if the jet stream does undulate like it is right now, and the jet stream doesn't stay right over Southern California like it would in a typical El Nino year, then we could get some of the storms out of this and then we still could see sporadic swells of still some decent size that would be coming out of the western pacific not completely torn apart by the blocking high pressure because it would be dissipating especially as la nina loses some ground we go more into a neutral state but also if that leg of the jet stream just moves a little bit farther to the east for a while we dry out a little bit we can get some swells so if everything does work out right and by the looks of it right now we might see a decent number of decent sized swells in january february also decent amount of rain over the next a couple months. Well, that's how things are looking right now. I hope that you liked this video, and if you did, you can subscribe to this channel, and as soon as one of these videos are posted, you'll be the first to know. And of course, don't forget to follow my forecasts on forecasts.surfingmagazine.com. I concentrate on Southern California and also a synopsis for all of the West Coast. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and smile on the lineup.